I didn't really know where I stood with the U.S. when I was in college. I was never really called up to youth teams. I never knew if that dream would ever become a reality. And I got the opportunity with Mexico. I went to the U20 World Cup, and then I, I played in a tournament with the full team. And I think that is when the decision just became a little bit more difficult because I loved playing for Mexico. But then deep down, I knew the U.S. was the ultimate dream. I think I was just too young to fully commit to Mexico and I thought that I would regret it for the rest of my life if I just didn't try. I knew inside what I was capable of and I was the only one who knew that. Everyone was like, oh, you should play for Mexico and I was like, oh, I think that's not gonna be the decision right now. I'm gonna keep playing in the NWSL and keep doing what I know I can do. And then it was just like a lot of years where I wasn't getting called in and a hard decision to de decline the invitations from Mexico, but three years later, once I got the first call in, in 2017 under Jill, I just knew she, you know, she had brought to my attention that you know this was a one-time switch and I wouldn't be able to go back. And I said, "That's fine. I've been sitting waiting for three years, so I've had a lot of time to sit on this decision." Actually, playing for Mexico made me realize. I can play with the best. I was playing internationally, we played against Brazil, one of the top teams and we actually beat them and, and I did really well and so I think it made me realize if I keep working towards this dream, it's definitely something that I can accomplish. And so getting experience at the international level at such a young age to help me realize if I stay on this path, I work hard and I believe in myself, there's no way that I can't do this. But I think on top of that, it was just such an honor to represent Mexico, I mean my family, is from Mexico, my dad was born there, he lived there most of his life, and all of his family still lives in Puebla. I definitely felt really connected to my Mexican roots. You know, I would go there twice a year growing up, and I was very happy to represent my family and to put on the Mexican jersey. So like, I also really had a lot of fun doing that, and I will always appreciate my time with Mexico, and I made a lot of friends and got to play internationally, and of course, those were like the two best things about it. But most importantly, it just led me to the US team, which I'll always be thankful for. We're getting word she's coming off for Sophie Huerta, who's going to become the first player to play for and against the United States. This is a really interesting well, story. 20, yeah, under 20 she, has been, she has been training with the U.S. In her first cap with the U.S. team playing in an outside back position. Nothing can compare to your first cap. When we were in Denver, I got a call from Jill and she said, your papers were approved. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. That game came along and yeah, the nerves are something that were like really there for me. I was so, so nervous, even though I knew this day was coming. I think it's just something you can't really prepare for. In her first cap ever for the United States, she plays that ball across to Morgan. And so once I got that call up, I knew, okay, this was the right choice for me. And it was so fun. And I'm obviously was so thankful for that opportunity. The way that it went was that I made the decision to play for the US. I got called in. I was getting called in for a year and a half and then I stopped getting called in. And so I think that was actually when a lot of people were like, I told you so. And it actually did affect me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I had a lot of anxiety thinking about you know, the opportunity that I had and that I didn't seize it. I think everyone knows that this environment is so competitive and it's so hard to get into. When you do get an opportunity, that might be your only opportunity, you just get one. You just doubt yourself a lot. I did let it get to me a little bit, and then I started just realizing, how is that serving me? How, what is that doing for me? It's not actually doing anything, it's actually hurting me. Because I was just thinking so much about the past and what I could have done differently. And then I also had anxiety about the future and whether or not I was ever gonna get this opportunity again. And so I just had to really sit and think about what I wanted and what I had to do to get me to that spot. And I think I realized I had to get to a point where I believed in myself and I had to do the best that I could. And it was also changing the narrative a little bit. I felt like if I wasn't on the national team, I was a failure. But that obviously is not true. I'm a professional soccer player. I get to play soccer for my job and I get to make money and I get to be around such empowering, confident women. Like my job is actually amazing. And just because I'm not on the national team right now doesn't mean that I'm not successful and that I'm not a good player. The main thing that happened was Laura Harvey came back to OL Reign and she had called me 
not even after a week she had been there and was like, hey, I'm gonna move you back to Outside Back. And I said, great, because I feel like I, you know, did what I had to do to become a better Outside Back. I went to Australia, I played a few games there. We actually won the grand final. I scored, that was so cool. I was like one of my favorite like memories I have as a pro soccer player. Trying to tee up Fuerta! few months after being moved back to outside back, Vlatko called me. I like I saw a call coming from Kansas City and I was like, who is this? Is it spam? But I was like, I should answer because just in case. And I answered and you know, it was Vlatko and he just said, hey, I just want to let you know. We're going to call you in and you deserve it. And I didn't cry when I was on the phone, but I hung up and I cried. It's just been a long road, but I know that this was meant to be. And you know, now I'm in a position where I really, really believe I should be here. And that's because of what I've done mentally and all the work I've done, but also just the support from everyone around me. You know, I feel a lot of support from like with the Rain family and obviously the US family as well. And so I just feel like I'm in a really good position now. I love coming back to Mexico, whether it's for soccer or vacation, it's just like I feel so at home. So I'm really, really excited to be back here. Everything's come full circle for me. Of course, with my story and playing for Mexico and then now being on the national team and having qualifiers in Mexico and being on the squad, that just means everything to me. And then on top of that, my family is coming. My, my dad and my sister are flying from the States and then my family from Puebla is, is coming to watch the game. And they're so sweet. I mean, they've always supported me so much. And I remember when I was going through, you know, the decision making process and whether or not I wanted to play for the US or stay with Mexico, they were always so supportive. They were just like, we want you to do whatever's gonna to make you happy. It's so exciting that my family is going to be here and I'm like so happy to be back here and I just love Mexico and I'm just ready to take on whatever opportunity presents itself and obviously we're all just really wanting to win this championship.